strange that she who didn't know me said, pray, Rabbi. I believe all this, everything is telling us that we are on a, at a very critical moment now. On the verge of what could be judgment. And I believe a storm is coming. And that we need to be prepared. And that we need to be praying even now. Even now and need to be ready. America, the courts, of course there's a remnant, of course, of course it's not unanimous in any way, but America, its courts, its majority have made it, it's made its decision. And though it didn't catch us unaware, I believe, I've said it, you've heard me say it, for over a decade that it was going to be the law of the land except for the hand of God. Nevertheless, it was colossal, tectonic, ground-moving, and it concerns every child of God. We are witnessing a change, the likes of which we have not seen since the Christianization of the Roman Empire. This is the de-Christianization of Western culture. And when sin is established, righteousness is disestablished. When darkness comes out of the shadows into the mainstream, it will seek to drive righteousness out of the mainstream into the shadows. It means persecution, except for the hand of God, it means persecution. But there's good in this. Good news. Cheer up. Good news. Positive. But not the way some preach it. It means the word of God, the faith of God, will move from being status quo cultural faith to a counter-cultural faith. From an established, institutionalized faith to an alive, underground faith. From a gray and mixed manifestation of faith to a pure, fiery manifestation of faith. To a revolutionary faith. That's God's will. That's not a bad thing. Persecution's not bad. In fact, we may need it. See, the grays are disappearing. And if the, if the darkness is removing the grays to become blatantly dark... The lights must remo remove the grays from their lives, from our lives, so we can become radically light. Some will be intimidated. Some will be silent. Some will be compromised. Some will apostatize. But for those who stand, and we know that's the only way, they will go from gray to radically bright. All it takes is to stand. Every time you make the decision to stand, Strong in the midst of darkness, no matter what the majority says, no matter what happens, it will make you pure, stronger. The candle that burns in the daytime, you can barely see it. But the candle that burns at night, it can see, you can shine up miles. The same candle, by simply refusing to bow down, to stand, will make your light mighty in God. There's a cost, there's resistance, it's harder when everybody around you is saying no, but it's more than worth it. These are the times we've always talked about. These are the days of testing, but these are days of shining. These are the days, you know, when if you stand for God, you'll become the person you are meant to be, because it's going to force you. It's like the ground is breaking beneath you, and you can't stay in the middle anymore. It forces you one way or the other, either radically bad or radically great. These are the days where if we stand, we will become like the book of Acts. You want Bible times? You've got it. <laughs> Congratulations. You've got it. You always say, oh, I want, right, I want Bible times. I want it. You've got it now. That you can send a thank you to the Supreme Court. You want, you want, you know, the end times? You've got that. You want the book of Acts? Oh, we want to be a book of Acts thing. Well, book of Acts comes with some things there. What will happen around us? Will it discourage us? No, it will challenge us. It will convict us. It will purify us. It will empower us. It will lift us up. We will remove the grace from our lives, whatever it takes. We will become the lights we were meant to be. We will stand strong. We will stand strong. You have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Though none go with you, still you will follow the world behind you, the cross before you, I will follow him. These are the days which produce greatness. And by God's power, by his Holy Spirit, we will become great in him. This, you'll listen, you know. It says, the eyes of the Lord are searching the entire earth, looking for the one whose heart is completely his. You be that one. 
we be that people. The Lord is searching, is seeking, and we need to be that people. And he will show himself mightily for that people. If we do this, this will be our greatest hour. You always want to stand for the Lord when it counts? Well, now's when it counts. When everybody says, hey, that's a nice thing, we applaud you, that doesn't count. But when everybody says, no, you can't do it, and you still stand, that counts. Then heaven is applauding you. I said on the day that I stood on Capitol Hill before the leaders and members of Congress, the day after the Supreme Court heard the case, I now say it today in our house. We make this declaration. We will not bow down our knees to Baal. We will not bow down our knees to political correctness. We will not bow down our knees to a morality that is as shifting as windswept sand. We will not bow down to the laws and precepts of rebellion or to the sacred cows of moral apostasy. We will not bow down to the idols of man. We will not bow down to Baal. We will bow down only to the Lord our God. Come what may, and we will have no other gods before him. For some trust in chariots, some trust in princes, some trust in Supreme Courts, some trust in White Houses, some trust in governments, some trust in Wall Street, some trust in powers, some trust in idols. But we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. In the name above all names, above all kings, above all powers, we will trust in the only name given by which we can be saved. We will trust in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, King of all kings, Lord of all lords, judge of all judges, light of the world, glory of Israel, foundation stone, and the only hope, the only answer, the only way to, that we will shine with the light of the power of the glory of God. So help us, God. Amen, amen, amen. Praise you.